All right, welcome to the official start of pain in the U.S. housing market. Welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Randy Patrick here putting the realism back in real estate for you. Today is June the 15th. What is the big news of the day? Well, we know the big news of the day is the Fed. Fed raising their interest rate. 75 basis points, pretty substantial. We'll talk about that, how it's, we'll talk about how that's going to affect the market in a second. But first of all, this video is brought to you by our friends at foreclosure.com. So if you'd like to figure out what's going on in your backyard, your neck of the woods, all the distressed properties, because listen, <laughs> they're coming and stuff like this going on today, we're going to get more of them for sure. Um, definitely go to gethousingdata.com. Go to gethousingdata.com. That's my affiliate link with foreclosure.com. So you hit that site, sign up, you get a free seven-day preview. This is the most cost-effective service that you can find the most distressed property listings in the U.S. here. So check it out, guys. It's worth your time to look to see what's happening in your local real estate market. So getting back to the Fed, guess what? Fed hike rates by a stunning but expected 75 basis points today, the biggest hike since 1994, I guess you could say, the Fed expresses that they are strongly committed to fighting inflation. So that's what's going on right here. Now, just to summarize, um, it's benchmark rate by 75 basis points, biggest increase is 94, um, in line with what investors or economists were saying. So there's no surprise here. Uh, the Kansas City Fed president dissented in favor of a 50 point hike instead of 75. So there was one sort of, we'll call it dissenter amongst the ranks. Uh, it adds a line saying it's strongly committed to returning inflation to its 2% objective, removes prior language saying that it expects inflation to return to its 2% objective and the labor market to remain strong. So there's still some doubts going on here. Reiterates path on balance sheet reduction that took effect June 1st, shrinking bond portfolio by $47.5 billion a month, stepping up to $95 billion in, in September. And um, just FYI, prior, they've already made mention to reducing or selling off their mortgage-backed securities to a certain number of billions of dollars per month. I can't remember exactly what that was. That was. So we're going to take a look now at this one article, which I think is really good. And listen, I've been busy. I got stuff on the go here. Um, you know, I can't tell you guys enough that, you know, the changes are afoot. You may not see it quite yet in housing price appreciation and maybe you know, the, the prices you're paying for homes, etc. But behind the scenes, and when I call like the feet on the street, stuff that happens in the marketplace um, directly, which I see, it's already changing. And people are preparing uh, for the worst, which sometimes you can flip that and look at the flip side, which is actually the best opportunity, obviously, right? So please be aware that a lot of stuff that we see here is a lot of talk and rhetoric, but, you know, it, it's slowly taking effect and stuff's going on behind the scenes. So this is an interesting article, that's so why I want to go through it. Uh, it just kind of puts everything in a nutshell here. Basically, gear up for the 2022-2023 housing correction. Five charts highlighting the pain ahead for the housing market. So I'm going to just get to a little bigger um, position there. Okay, housing is always the last sector of the economy to turn when the market enters into recession. This is true. It should be noted that the past is not a prologue to the future, but at the end of the day, People pay their housing or rent payments via income that comes from somewhere. Um, case in point that the great financial crisis did not lead to a housing bottom until 2012. It is worth noting that over 7 million plus foreclosures happened during that period. Only 1 million plus were of the subprime flavor. The rest of the foreclosures came from vanilla 30-year fixed rate mortgages that went into negative equity situations and high unemployment made it when people could not pay their mortgage. So we're already seeing the layoffs starting this time around. Inflation's out of control. Uh, the Fed is running out of ammunition to curtail the price increases. What he's saying here is, I want to be clear here, it's not a political thing. Both Dems and Republicans are responsible for this since they both enjoyed uh, tax spending um, or spending and tax cuts. But from his vantage point, which is true, um, we have a day of reckoning that's going to take a few years to unwind here. This is why I think the housing pain is only starting okay it's only starting yes it's only starting and um, a lot of people are saying it's a three to four year play here of how this is all going to unwind so which seems to make sense you know housing crisis really came in 2007 2008 it kind of bottomed in 2012 that was about four years so four to five years so we're kind of on this time this, the same um, 
time frame. Now, here, reason one, uh, these are the five charts we're going to go through here. Interest rates have no choice but to correct. Well, clearly we've seen interest rates change and go up a little exponentially over the past, you know, uh, half year, few weeks. The recent, you know, consumer price index surprise caused the markets to drop because it signaled to others that the Fed will absolutely need to increase rates to curb runaway inflation. Uh, rates are now back up to 2008 levels, and we saw one of the most dramatic moves in rates one week here, which is which is true. And uh, you know, rate, rates today are over six percent. Uh, well, you know, today's 75 you know basis point change will obviously have an effect, and we'll find out in the next couple of days how that plays out. Just to show you how things play out here, we have a little um, example of you know one million dollar home. You got three percent interest rate, two hundred k down, principal, interest, taxes, whatever. It's petty, p i t i. Uh, total monthly payment of you know forty three hundred and forty four dollars. If you run these numbers again with interest rates at six percent, well, guess what? Uh, now we're seeing a forty two percent increase. The uh, for, total monthly payments now fifty seven sixty eight. So we can see how you know this interest rate stuff has really cut into today's buying power and is handcuffing a lot of potential buyers out there. You know, how's that going to reflect the market? Well, it's got to play out, right? It's got to play out. So this actually was a very interesting tweet. It says, at a 6.125 mortgage rate, if the average home price in the U.S. needs to fall approximately 32% to reach its pre-COVID affordability relative to income. <clears throat> so now, if we go back to the last housing crisis, all right, um, you know, from when the housing kind of market crashed, it crashed roughly 28, 30% across the board. Obviously, some locations fared worse. Some didn't, didn't you know, weren't hit too hard. But roughly a 30% decrease from peak to trough. Last housing crisis, 2006, 2000, you know, peak 2006, trough 2012. Well, what they're saying here is that just to get back down to pre-COVID affordability, it's almost the same thing, about 32% decrease in housing prices. So... That, you know, is a crash as far as I'm concerned. If that if that has to happen, I think it could even go a little bit farther than that as well. So we will have to see. Now, um, oh, one thing too, guys, if you're not a subscriber and you appreciate the information that I produce, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. And if you think you're a subscriber, could you double check? Because you know me, always losing what I put on basically and maintaining the status quo. So I'd appreciate it if you guys check and resubscribe. Thank you very much. Helping my channel grow giving me the incentive to keep making these videos. So, guys, here we go. Um, reason number two, households are maxing out on credit cards. So given the rise in costs of virtually everything, Americans are leaning on credit card debt and revolving debt to keep up their lifestyles. This is problematic since it's really covering up what is really happening. Wages are being eaten away by inflation. Raging prices are slamming consumers from food, energy, and household expenses. Um, this happened in the last financial crisis as well. And as you can see, that uh, chart, so the Americans were tapped out in where they were using HELOCs, credit cards, et cetera, and other revolving debt to keep up their lifestyles. Uh, fortunate out outcome that everything's been maxed out. So this did happen in the last housing crisis. HELOCs came into play. A lot of people did take a new cash out refi, so new 30-year fixed rate mortgage cash out refi, so they dipped in their equity. Yeah, they might have got a, a better rate, et cetera, but the, the main purpose of a cash out refi is to what? cash out, right? Yeah, you take advantage of the rate if it's available, but you're getting equity that you can play with that really, if you can't pay back, puts you in a bad situation. That was one of the number one issues. Again, it wasn't subprime. It was stuff like this that really pushed us over the edge in the last housing crisis. So looking at uh, the next chart here, which will be the reason number three. Let me move that over for you here. Um, cash out refinance is imploding. So as we mentioned, you can see how... Um, Thousands of rate locks, and you can see how uh, the different colors are, uh, you know, the year. So 2019 was gray, 2020 blue, 21 orange, and 2022 is the is the black line. And you can see how um, the, app, the cash out refi applications rate locks they're just dropping uh, pretty fast here. So again, you know, if you miss the three percent or sub three percent interest rates. You know, you want to pull money out now at 6%. You're probably going to think twice about that. It will have a big effect. in And, and how, what this, how this affects the, the market is the fact that it affects the cash. So consumers are not spending. Uh, they can't spend because they can't. You know, all this tappable equity. Well, you know, we talk about that or the media talks about tappable equity. Well, 
capital equity is, is you know that's that you know the money might be there the equity is there but can you afford to tap it I guess is what it boils down to kind of weird when you talk about tappable things right but anyway reason number four housing values increase faster during the pandemic than the Great Recession so we did that so basically if you look at this chart carefully remember how the insane the last housing, housing bubble turned out to be yes it was at the peak we were seeing nationwide 14 percent year over year increases. This time around, we're at 20% year-over-year annual gains. So guess what? And this is in the midst of a global pandemic with epic money printing. So the Fed's just juicing the market. It's it's a contributing to this stuff. And the, the Fed had no real choice but to prop to pop the housing bubble. So it propped the housing market. Now it's going to pop the housing bubble because inflation is a much more sinister problem. But of course, they can no longer say that. So also, um, <clears throat> the Fed fund rate back in the last housing crisis when the first bubble hit was 5%. So as they're saying here, it had room to navigate lower. Well, the Fed fund rate today is at 0.83%, which is ridiculously low, uh, and even with the, the recent tightening. So basically, you know, um, there's not much maneuverability here. So they're in a situation where they have to raise rates, simple as that, and then therefore the world changes and all this equity is going to you know, somehow uh, be diminished, I guess, in the next little while here. Uh, jobs in recession, clearly it's hard to pay uh, for your uh, mortgage and living expenses when you don't have a job. Many VCs and new companies, especially in places like crypto and tech, are falling hard. Just take a look at a big player like Coinbase, down a stunning 84% from its 52-week high. Uh, just stuff going on. And basically, uh, it's, it's not just you know crypto. Uh, it's in, in fintech and in, in real estate tech as well, too. A lot of stuff happening. Uh, you know, stock prices are dropping. Um, you know, um, these are high paying jobs in areas like California, and there are more and more stories like um, this hitting the news every day. These were companies built on ridiculous VC valuations, where sometimes people were looking at 10, 20, even 100 times valuations. So, how are those high home prices going to be supported when high income jobs contract and stock values get slammed because costs are so high? So, yeah, you were a lot of paper millionaires out there, but when Stock prices plummet, you know, your your shares and your strike price may give you a different story, right? So this is very important to what they're saying at the end here at this commentary. Uh, given that housing values are the last to show up in the correction, since they do, most, they do move so slow, you will see a shift later this year and into 2023. While history does not repeat itself, uh, it does rhyme. So we're kind of seeing... What really happened back in 2006, 7, and 8? I mean, we're at the cusp right now. I know that there's more foreclosures um, hitting the marketplace, more getting filed, things are catching up here. So there's, there's lots going on. And, you know, this is just damage to the industry based on interest rates rising, mortgage rates rising, of course, and causing slowdown, causing shifting, causing um, reduction in price points. I've seen you know people take stuff off market now. I've seen in our area, you know, compared to like three or four months ago, almost a doubling in inventory that's available or, or listings that are active right now on the single family side. So, you know, now granted, we are in the summer selling season, spring summer selling season. But, you know, with respect to you know this increase and increase in mortgage rates, how is it going to play out? I mean, are people just going to go, you know what, I'm taking my property off market and we'll just see how that plays out. Like, you know, we'll, you know, the next month will be very interesting. Month, next month or two months will be interesting to see how the rates are playing with people's minds and, ha and the havoc in the industry. This is the start of the pain, though. I mean, you know, the, the Fed has to, you know, increase to curb inflation. Uh, as I said, housing is like usually the last thing that gets affected by it. But when it gets affected by it, it gets affected pretty hard. And um, as I've always mentioned, you know, this nebulous, ambiguous number of foreclosures or pre-foreclosures forbearance delinquencies we'll just lump them all in one big bucket for now because again based on numbers and who's reporting what it's tough to get a handle on these things you know foreclosures are are maintaining um and they're not even anywhere near where they're going to be i can tell you i've spoken to a lot of people over the past couple of weeks a lot of larger investors are now coming out of the woodwork and they're basically saying we want to establish our position now with these distressed properties and really take an interest in this. So um, like everything, um, you know, uh, innovation and, you know, vultures come out and then money comes out uh, in, in crisis like this. So, 
expect the same. I mean, what did we learn? You know, the, the, the two things that we learned um, back in, um, you know, were, were, well, my two biggest take takeaways, which I might have mentioned this a number of times in videos, my two biggest takeaways um, out of the last housing crisis were, number one, markets can be controlled by the powers that be, whether that's the Fed, other parts of the government, Wall Street, whatever, and the fact of the matter that housing is now a commodity, the American dream is kind of dead, housing's all about numbers now, and, you know, hedge funds, other large, large REITs and uh, investment firms realize that, hey, we can buy up a ton of these homes at d deep discounts and rent them out to people and make a ton of money. So uh, realize that there is a ton of that waiting to happen. So we can do two things. We can, you know, sit here and pout about it and, um, you know, and let them take over and, and, and take those things away from us. Or we can get involved in the game and, and do the deals and, you know, pick and choose and cherry pick what we want and sell the other ones to these guys and make money. So that's how I look at things. I mean, you know, there's certain things that you can fight and certain, but there's certain things that you just, you know, can't change or you'll fight to a certain point and maybe get some headway. Um, you know, I, I, I've done, I'm done fighting. I'd rather find ways to sort of work in between the seams and, uh, op you know, operate, you know, intelligently where there is opportunity and take advantage of it because we have the experience of what happened back in the last housing crisis. We see how things, or we saw how things played out. We see the players, we know what's going on. Just, you know, change your perspective and, and work with work within the confines that we're given. You'll do just fine, all right. So anyway, guys, um, one thing, as I said, you know, the housing pain, but guess what? Short sales are back on the menu. Um, I'm in the process of redoing all my stuff to a uh, new program, but uh, people have asked me, going, you still got your short sale program? Like I do, I wasn't really keeping it on the market, but if you want to start talking about it, let's do it. I'll get you on that program, migrate you into the new stuff I'm working on. It'll be more valuable to you right now than it'll, than it'll be more expensive in the future. So, guys, this is what's happening. You know, I, I can't tell you what I'm doing behind the scenes and some of the people I'm working with, but it's pretty significant and pretty volume voluminous, I guess that's the word, of where some of these investor buyers are going to go and how they're going to hit. So uh, get in the game now. Um, you know, don't shy away don't miss your second chance at a once in a lifetime opportunity i really mean that i've been talking about this for a couple years it's starting to play out right now so get involved don't mess don't miss this opportunity all right guys you want to get a hold of me you know the best way um email me your information we'll connect we'll have some calls we'll go back and forth jump on the bandwagon okay jump on my bandwagon this is the way to do things all right anyway guys once again i appreciate the views likes comments Please share the video with your family and friends. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Look forward to speaking with you in the next couple of days. Take care.